Yeah, I think she was talking about the size of his uh, water bottle. Okay. <laughs> Welcome to episode three of Love Island or Lie Island with Metro.co.uk. I'm here with body language expert Judy James to discuss this week's drama um, and also some of your burning questions. You guys have been commenting on the YouTube videos. That's great. Thank you so much. And I want to start with something that's coming up quite a bit, and that's Curtis. Oh, I thought you meant my water. You meant <laughs> <laughs> so, also safe up. distance. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, quite a few uh, of the fans are, they just don't trust him. Okay. They don't think he's legitimate. What are your thoughts? Do you think that they have a point? And what is it that they're seeing that's maybe making them think this? Why would you not trust a man as perfect as <laughs> Curtis? Hmm. Um, yes, I think it is that word perfect. I, I'm, he's been in there now for how long? Three weeks. Three weeks. Yeah. And we haven't seen any other side to him. I, I, for me, I think I'm seeing a kind of choreography that you might get in Strictly Come Dancing. It's um, a little bit too perfect. A, why is he giving the house uh, people advice when actually he's never had a relationship himself? He's had one girlfriend. Yeah, that doesn't actually mean that you can get <laughs> okay. stuck in with everybody, you know. Uh, and also, anybody that gets up in the morning and starts doing motivational phrases like, and I'm wincing while I'm saying it, what was it? Don't follow the clock. Be the clock. I mean, really, that would I have to smother him with the duvet. I don't mean I don't mean physically do him any harm, <laughs> but just put it over his head or something. I I think the problem is that it's all too perfect. We haven't seen any problems with Amy whatsoever. There's been no bonding problems. You always get storming, norming, performing with a relationship, but it was like straight away, absolutely perfect, no problems at all. And I think that's probably what makes him a little bit unbelievable there's been no pairing back and I know dancers and ballroom dancers they can maintain that for quite a long time I did notice him dressing like Danny from Greece so you know he's a little <laughs> bit in costume I think with a lot of the stuff so yeah probably just because he looks overly perfect which would make one suspicious are you seeing any cracks in this potential performance that he's putting on? Is there anything that's making you think we might re see the real Curtis sometime soon? No, 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 nothing at all. I mean, the only thing that I did notice that again made me a bit suspicious was um, after it was announced that they were staying in, that they, that they were fine, they hadn't been picked as a couple to be uh, evicted, uh, they kissed one another. Um, and as soon as he pulled back from the kiss, you know, like kids when their mums kiss them outside school. He like wiped his mouth oh, like he did. that. Yes, yeah, yes, and yeah. I wouldn't have been very flattered by that if I were her. <laughs> and he needs to look at Tommy because when Tommy was kissed, did you see what he did? No. Oh my God, it was actually romantic and slightly. Was this when he kissed Molly May. Yeah. You were going to talk about that later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, he he kind of pulled his lips in and ate the lipstick, which is a bit more romantic. <laughs> you called out Amy last week for not being very real, and a lot of the viewers are agreeing with you about this one. I want to discuss the sort of various faces that we've seen of her, um, so take a look at this clip. Um, from what we've seen, Amy has been quite unhappy with Lucy's status, like amongst the girls, and then the decision um, to hang out with the boys. But is there anything that these faces are telling us that she's not saying? Yeah, I think it's the random top lip that is what we would call uh, in poker a tell. She normally has a very sweet demeanour and very self diminished, but watching her facial expression it might just be unfortunate i'll give her the benefit of the doubt but you can see particularly i mean when um lucy was left in it, it she does this kind of slight sneer with the top lip it appears to be uh, i noticed also that she had a little bit of a problem when she found out that that joe had been sent home knowing that that was partly down to her I think she had to very quickly kind of, she couldn't use any eye contact, so she, she looked away. Because Lucy did almost look round straight away like, j'accuse, who did that to me? But it's definitely watch the movement of the top lip. She loses that very sweet smile and you can see the lip, right, and at some points it kind of, it, it hikes up in just one side as well. And that does appear to be showing, and it might not be 100%, but it does appear to be showing a slightly more competitive side to her nature. 
So we have got some calls to be maybe concerned about I how real she's being in the villa. Watch this space, yeah. yeah. I mean, her, her behaviour as well, you know, I mean, actually uh, picking on her best friend. I mean, even Lucy didn't think that she'd do that. She was quite mm -hmm. sure, and we're watching that she was doing it at the same, with St Curtis as well, can I say. <laughs> Um, the big thing we talked about last week as well was the new girl, Maura, who came in. And so it's been a week since she's been in and she's really come in like a hurricane. Um, she jumped from Tommy to new boy Tom pretty quickly, um, which I think has kind of put her on the back foot amongst mm. the other girls in the villa. Um, and then she obviously had that whole issue with Elma, uh, which was brilliant TV. Um, I want to talk a bit about her and Tom, though, because that's who she seems to be setting her sights on now. You do too. Thanks. It's not really my style normally, but... Mm. Thanks. Thanks. It's bright. Yeah. Mm. Maybe I could have had some bright trainers on. Nah, it'd be too much. Yeah. Okay. So she has kind of said in the beach hut, I'm not sure I'm into him, I'm not sure there's a connection. But what does the body language tell us? Can you see the boredom in her face? <laughs> I, 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 she's trying really hard. This guy means potential survival for her, obviously, if she doesn't pair off with somebody. And he's a good looking guy, as she keeps saying. Uh, but you can see her just pulling back slightly, getting slightly taller, looking him up and down. And then we get that big gesture where she her tongue goes over her top teeth. Mm -hmm. And there's a, it, it's not a tongue poke, which might be sexy, or even a, a lick of the corner of the mouth. This is almost a signal of, wow, if I've got to. <laughs> um, and a, a very large swallow as well. It's as though, you know, it looks like somebody trying to take medicine. And I mean, he's not an unattractive guy. He's a very nice guy. But she's a feisty woman. Mm -hmm. And I don't think he's going to be... When I say man enough for her, I don't think he's got enough character for her at the moment. Do you think he's into her, though? I, I think he seems to be. Um, but again, he did watch her with all the Tommy stuff, you know, going in there like an Exocet missile. And I think he might find that a little bit daunting, although he did kind of meet the challenge at one point, didn't he? I, I, I think that tended to be role play as far as he's concerned. I think we'll see when they don't couple up, I think we'll see a different side to him. I don't think he's the male equivalent of her or anything like that. Although, wasn't everybody surprised at how few partners she'd had when she mm. announced it? And I, you could actually see Tommy, did you notice? His eyes like, oh, maybe I've misjudged this one. She, yeah. She's been really nice with Lucy as well, so. Yeah. Um, that was actually something I wanted to bring up, Tommy and Maura. Um, he recoupled up with Molly May, um, but the last couple of episodes we've seen him speaking to Maura a bit more, and in that clip there we saw him watching them like a hawk. Mm. Um, what did you notice about his behaviour, and is he maybe regretting his decision? I, I think he might be a little bit. I mean, he's a guy that, you know, he doesn't do the whole length of the counter before he makes his purchase. So he, <laughs> he's, he's very, oh, I, I love you. I, you know, no, I wouldn't choose anybody else. You're the perfect woman for me. Uh, and I think he may have dismissed Moira a little bit too soon. I think possibly he would have seen her as slightly intimidating stroke threatening because... It, he wouldn't have had a choice. You know, I think she gave the impression that she would just be clambering all over him and uh, he might have looked a bit weak on the back of that. Uh, I think he's realising now that there's an intelligent, kind of interesting woman in there as well that might not have behaved like that. Um, yeah, I, I think he might have a little bit of the old roving eye going <laughs> on there. With Maura's chats with some of the girls, um, I've noticed um, Elma, who's, who's now gone, and also Molly May, um, she doesn't seem to make much eye contact, and I notice there's a lot of sort of like hands involved. Um, is that a sort of sign of her lying or nervousness when she's having those conversations, or what does that sort of mean? I, I don't think it's either. I think you've got a really strong... Th they're a kind of strong group, the women, but they're also, to a certain extent, there, there's a lot of bad advice being given in that group. Th they all collect together with, oh, we're all friends, you've got to be one of us, blah, blah, blah. And, and then somebody will often say something and you think, you're stirring it up and, and you've just given them advice that actually is going to compromise their position on the show. And I think she realises that. So I think that possibly might be why she's going through the motions a little bit rather than genuinely feeling it. And, and I think she knows she got resentment from them from the way that she came in and went after Tommy. But again, then we're seeing probably a genuine warmer side in the way that she's been very much there for Lucy yeah. after Joe went. Yeah. Lucy's actually our next clip. 
you know See, what I mean? The hardest thing is, Lisa, is that literally the day before this happened is that I sat with Joe at the fire and he looked at me and he said, I don't know if me and Lucy are compatible. He literally looked at me and said that. It wasn't about who's the happiest couple, it's about who's, like, who's going to work on the outside, who's got similar interests, etc. That, that's what compatibility is. So Lucy's been really vocal about this whole, I'm not a girl's girl, mm. whatever that means. Um, now Jo's gone and we've seen her with the girls a little bit more than we kind of have before. But what, do, what did her body language in that bit in particular tell you about how she's feeling and her comfort levels with the girls? I kind of noticed that she had one arm back, but she also seemed quite closed off. I, I hate seeing her as she is at the moment. I mean, she's so... I know sometimes you get on these shows projectile tears for no reason or that usually they can do it with mascara not even moving <laughs> with her whole face for several days now has been swollen with tears and her whole physical demeanour as well and it's such a pity um, I think she needs help and friendship in there but I think she's as you say I think we can see from her body language that she's wary she knows that it was down to some of those people around there uh, as to why Joe left and why probably both of them could have gone initially. So that wariness, I think, is, is absolutely uh, what she should be doing. And that's probably why we're seeing her, yeah, pulling back a bit. We can see when they're speaking, she's using an evaluating eye gaze rather than an open eye gaze. So she's trying to work out who's telling her the truth, who isn't, are you actually my friend? And it's like Molly came in, oh, you know, hand on the leg, I'm your best friend. You do know that Joe said that he wasn't that in. <laughs> wow, that's not what you want to hear at that point. That's not friend advice. You know, there's times not to say anything. That was said to save their own skin a bit. Um, whether it's true or not, it doesn't matter. There's bad news, you don't give friends. Uh, so, yeah, I think she's being rightly wary and the wariness is visible in her body language even though she's patently genuinely upset. She has been getting closer with Maura though, do you think she's maybe just someone who gets better with one-on-one -on -one time with someone rather than big friendship groups? I think Maura's a lot more direct in her communication and I, I think she can trust her because of that. She might not like what Maura's doing, I mean probably she does recouple with anybody, she probably wouldn't trust them with Maura, mm -hmm. but at the same time I think she understands that with her you will see and hear what's happening as opposed with the others where she doesn't know how to judge them they're, they're I won't say completely two-faced, but uh, she might be more paranoid, so sometimes it's better under those circumstances to have a friend that absolutely you can see what they're doing, whether you like it or not you haven't got to worry about it, it's there Yeah do you think she'll leave the villa and go after Joe, or do you think she'll stay? I don't, I, I, I'm not quite sure, um, and I'm surprised I'm saying that because normally what we've seen in the past has been, um, when, when partners have gone, it's been the old projectile tears with the makeup, and then it's been, uh, oh yeah, when's the next one coming yeah. in? <laughs> Save your own profile. With her, I have to say with her body language, I wasn't sure. And I think that she's having generally a hard time in there and it may have got her down and that might be the reason why she doesn't want to stay. I, I could see moments when she was trying to be brave and, and, and get back on top again. But I don't, I, it won't just be Joe. I think it will be everybody else in there. I think there just might be a little bit too much for her. Yeah. I was talking about to uh, Tommy and Molly May. They have recoupled, and although we're not sure about this roving eye, um, they did just have their first kiss. I'm just going to watch this clip. When we left them last night, Tommy and Molly May were sharing their first kiss. Oh, your first kiss. A unique and magical moment that will never be repeated. Ah, <laughs> oh, you've repeated it! You've made me look like an idiot on the tail! I mean, love her or hate her, she's been through a bit of a journey this last week. Um, but what does that body language, first of all, just tell us about their connection or if they even have one? This scene, to me, was so choreographed, it was <laughs> unbelievable. It, it was so choreographed that Molly couldn't not keep bursting out laughing. Yeah, he's sitting there, obviously this is his big moment to declare as Prince Charming, etc. And you can see her looking at him like, what, really? <laughs> um, and I, I, that was not a natural looking scene and the kiss was not a natural kiss either. Clearly there's attraction between them but that, as I say, the choreography, it, 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 it was 
100% choreographed. I, I loved the way her face did a complete rumba as well. She was, she was gurning when he was talking to her. I mean, there's this guy sort of saying almost, I love you now and you're my perfect woman. And her whole face was going all over the place. And I loved that because that was some real responses as in, I can't believe you're talking to yeah. me like this. So you're normally a bit of a laugh. Um, Do you think she just doesn't trust him then? No. I, 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 I think I don't think deeply she doesn't trust him, but I think she could see that that wasn't what he would normally be like, and I think she just wanted him to perhaps have have more fun uh, yeah. rather than try to get uh, fake serious too soon, yeah. just because it's time to do it. Yeah. Um, one couple that is kind of falling apart this week is Danny and Yuande. Um She sort of has been claiming that she is into him, but that she's just not an open person or a talkative person. So I just want to watch this clip a second. That's like, the, that's the only. You liked him no, or not. but you know what it is. That's the only frustrating thing with Danny is that like I just feel like he just always needs reassurance. I'm not going to tell you every day no. that I really like you and that I find you attractive. I'm not going to. No. It's never going to happen. Okay. She seemed really agitated and maybe a little bit upset as well. What did that body language tell you about how she's feeling? It's funny, uh, and not just a coincidence, that uh, Yuande and Anna, two most intelligent women in there, I would imagine. I mean, I, it's certainly in terms of intellect and jobs and things like that, they just can't cut it when it comes to pretending to like the people that are being sent in for them. And I think both of them have had people sent in that it's almost like, yeah, I've got to do what everybody else is doing and couple off and scream over the first kiss and <laughs> things like that. And I think they're struggling to act that role out. And I know you end up, did, it did look surprising because she did look so into him at the start and giggly and everything like that. But I think what we're seeing now is probably more like the real her. That a lot of that was rebooting her own power and her own status. She had her chin up. She had a very serious facial expression, self-preening gestures, and I think she's realised now there's no point in doing the giggly, flirty teenager stuff because I, I'm not feeling it. And as much as I might like to try for the show, I, I'm, I'm not going to. Yeah. So that confidence, I think, is, is, is more her, and I like to see it coming out. So you don't think that the situation has maybe lowered her confidence then or that she's sort of starting to panic? You think actually she's going to stay strong to who she is and not let the show change her? I, I think that's it. For me, it's like, shall I play the game? Shall I go through this ritual that I know is, is expected of me and, and be this giggly smitten? Or, no, I'm actually going to admit it. He, he's, he's not for me. And she said, I'm not sure why, but I don't think we can see why. Um, she doesn't want to settle for kind of blandness in the relationship. I mean, I think we could all, well, maybe not everybody, but certainly not him. Um, <laughs> you know, just, just wheeling in a good looking guy and, and that will be it. It's not enough for these women, you know, they, they've got brains, they don't want just that. Yeah. What do you think, knowing what we know of her, she's looking for in a guy? Or is that sort of the eternal question? I, 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 funnily enough, she says, oh, you know, every other relationship I've had, I've the, been, it's like she's been the one doing the chasing, she's had not bites. I think she's more complex than that, though, you know, I think that's too simplistic to say she wants somebody more dominant. That, that, I think she's feminist enough not to want that. But I think she would like somebody that intellectually is a bit more of a challenge as well. And she almost found that a bit with Michael when she found out he got a similar job, but I don't think enough of that came out. So I think she needs somebody that sharp brain, uh, great conversations, um, and, and build a relationship rather than just, okay, you know, it's like buying a cardigan, isn't it? I don't want to do. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, sorry, Danny, I didn't mean he was an old cardigan, but uh, yeah, he'd be better off with one of the other girls. I want to end this on what I hope is going to be a positive note. Oh, God, you've come to the wrong person. <laughs> sorry, you want to know if somebody's in love, don't Amber you? Amber and Michael, let's Ooh. watch them. <laughs> Myself. <laughs> My family would love you. Do they? You'd fit right in. Why? Yeah. Just because we all laugh and joke like I do anyway, so the way me and you get on, you'd get on with them like that as well. Mm -hmm. So like, you'd fit right in and it wouldn't, it wouldn't even, it'd be like you've always been there. How do you think I'd get on with your family? Not at all. <laughs> Not sure. Okay. Is it their first date? I've got, no, I, let's just send in the priest and marry them right away. They're so well suited. No, I, 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 you know, I, you've got two feisty characters mm -hmm. there. And suddenly they're all sweetness and light, completely perfect, such a wonderful couple that they're giving everybody else advice. 
I, at the moment, they're the ones that are going to be assuring to win the whole thing because everybody in there is well, oh, they're perfect and everything like that. I want to see them sort out things like power balances and things like that. At the moment, you know, he's saying, oh, I like her, she's feisty, but he's a feisty guy as well. Let, let's get a few of the, the real threads of the relationship going yeah. so it's not all smiley, smiley. So I, I'm not completely convinced. As they had a conversation earlier this week, I think, where he was saying, I want some a bit more reassurance, you know, because mm -hmm. she has been quite closed off. And then she's done that for him, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but I just wanted to think about that language in particular in that date. Looking at it, like watching her, she looked quite coy at times. Yeah. I just wondered what you sort of the point of that is. Why would someone do that? And do you think she's being genuine with that then? Or is it a well, act? either a very strong feisty woman has been so smitten by love that it's made her coy or she knows that that's quite a nice little ritual to go through and he's doing it as well so it's not too okay. difficult for them that they're mirroring one another um, I listen there are no absolute grounds but I'm still need convincing on this one I'm okay. afraid I know they <laughs> like one another they look very good together um, there's quite a few good touch rituals. What I would like everybody to watch over the next week though, and a lot of them aren't doing it, when they hold one another and put their arms around one another's shoulders, watch the men's fingers. Are they actually holding the women? Because a lot of them are still doing what I call gentlemen's hands. The fingers are held away right. from the body, which is quite unusual in intimate relationships like that. So that's often the tell. Is it unusual for Love Island though, for it to be three weeks in and for the men to still maybe not be like cupping their hands and things? Well, it's very unusual. I mean, I, I haven't watched it since the outset, but I thought there'd always big duvet action by now. I mean, you know, <laughs> but I've seen some of them, I reckon some of them in the past have got under the duvet and just gone like that with the duvet, you know, punch the duvet and then come out and still using gentlemen's hands because yeah. nothing went on under that duvet. So yeah, it, it, what, what we see isn't always what's happening. <laughs> okay, thanks for watching guys. Uh, you can catch us every Thursday on YouTube and Metro.co.uk. And uh, thank you so much, Judy. Thank you.